what's up guys and welcome to my channel my name is chelo the fashion fairy and if you're tuning in for the first time you're welcome if you're a returning subscriber you're welcome back if you want to see how i made this gown definitely keep watching see you in my tutorial Hey so fairies and welcome to class. So in today's tutorial, I'll be looking at how I made this gown. So first thing you want to do is to put your fabric on fold. Now for you to know the width of the entire fabric you'll be folding, you are going to do your hip divided by four and we are going to be adding at least two inches to this so that this forms the width of your front. We'll be cutting both the front and the back pieces and we'll be using freehand to do this. So um, for us to get our vertical measurements, you get from your shoulder to your waistline, your shoulder to your hip, and then um, your shoulder to the length. Remember, we're going to be adding gathers to the end of this. So um, you're going to be minusing the length of the gathers. And for me, I used about nine inches for this. So from the entire length, you're going to be minusing the length of the gathers. And then you're going to be marking this. So for me to get my chest line, I marked two and a half inches above my bust measurement. And for the width of my neckline, I used four inches. For my shoulder, I used eight inches plus half inch of sewing allowance that made it eight and a half and then i did one inch shoulder slope and then on my chest line i also marked my um shoulder measurement on it for me to get a straight line for me to get my armhole curve so marking from um my shoulder to my chest line um i got um eight nine inches and half inch would be for um for adjoining it at the shoulder so dividing that by two i'm just going in by half inch and then i'm going to get my armhole curve from this so um this is what i have so far and i'm dividing my bust measurement by four and then i'll be i'll be adding that here and of course i'll be adding one inch for sewing allowance and another one inch for um ease so that is a total of two inches to all my measurements so this i'll be doing to the waist and also to the hip this is not a standard if you want it to be freer it means you will have to add more ease to this so um, my um, hip measurement divided by four i'm also going to be adding two inches to this measurement remember this was the um, measurement that we used initially to get the fold so um you want to rule this and connect it like so so um for me to get my armhole curve i already put my bust measurement so i just use that curve up onto here remember this is a free hand method so i won't be using any curves for this so for the length of my um gown there's this trick i usually use for this um since i'm going to be cutting off part of it what i usually do is to make sure i construct the whole gown so that i will get the fitting right and then i'll remove what i need meaning that i'll be constructing the full gown on this and then i'll be cutting out what i need but before then i'll show you how to get your dart using your bust point to bust point measurement also known as nipple to nipple measurement and once you get this you're going to make a line and then you construct your dart so i usually use um half inch on either side which is um one inch uh, uh, um, for the whole thing so and you'll be doing this thing on your waist line so since we did not add the data allowance before we're going to be adding one inch to the waist measurement and then we'll be connecting it all the way to the um, chest line and all the way to this point right here so um, that's the hip line and then we're going to be constructing our darts like so So for us to have a good fit, like I said earlier, I'll be using length 40. Uh, that's the entire length needed for this gown. And then I'll be removing about um, 8 inches from this. And this 8 inches will form my gathers. So for me to get a, a good fitted gown, I'll be constructing the whole um, 40 inches here. But first of all, I'll mark out where I want the um, gathers to start. And then I'm going to be doing the rest of this like so. And it will just be like I'm drafting a normal gown. 
this is because i want it to be pencil and if i don't do this i will not be able to get the what i'm supposed to reduce at that point at that 32 inch point so this is the entire length of the gown that i'm working with and then um this is where the flare um this is where i'm going to cut from and then i'll be adding the gathers to it but on this line i'm going to be measuring just to make it a bit of pencil i'm going to measure one and half inches and i'll be connecting this all the way to my hip area notice that on that um 32 inch mark that there's a bit of um um let's say um curve what would i use for that a bit of pencil so um, what i did was to make it more obvious so this is what i'm trying to explain to you that once you do it like this it at that point is going to fit you better so what i'm going to do is i'm going to be cutting this out and i already um incorporated the half inch that i'll be using to join this and i'll just be cutting this off if you don't want to use a dart for this gown you can use the initial mark that i made earlier for this and because i want to use it to cut the back as well i just cut off about one and a half inches from the neckline and on the armhole i decided to um bring it out a bit like so so that by the time i'm done cutting um the back i'm going to shape this front the way i want it to be so essentially this is me showing you what i cut off and then showing you the armhole for the back and then i'm going to be bringing my fabric again and i'm going to be doing this on fold i will show you how to do this remember that the back has zipper allowance so we're going to be making room for this so i'll show you how to place this so that you can get your zipper allowance from here as well So because i'm working with um, a fabric that has patterns it's very essential that you follow the patterns well make sure you place the patterns the way they're supposed to be take your time to do this because this is what separates the um, professionals from people that are just um learning work if you know what i mean so now that i've placed my patterns right you can see that i gave a bit of um gap and i gave about one inch from the fold and this would be would serve as my sewing allowance um zipper allowance i beg your pardon if you feel that one inch is a bit too small for you you can do one and a half inches at this point one inch is not a standard just work with whatever you feel comfortable with so for me to cut out the back i'm going to cut it like so i usually like to also add that to my back as well so that it reduces the back bulge so this is what i'm doing and i'm using this to cut out my back pattern and then i'll be trimming out the front like i mentioned earlier So I'm extending the waistline to the back so that I'll be able to shape this to avoid that back board. So I took out half inch from this point and I connected it all the way to my chest line, just slightly above my chest line. And I'm also going to do this to, and connect it to the hip area. And this is how it will be. I'm not going to be adding back this half inch that I took from the back because um, my back board it, it will make it lay better on my back this is a trick i usually use for my gowns and they come out beautifully so back to my front pattern um like i said i'm going to be trimming out the front like so remember it was the front that i drafted at first and i used it to cut the back so i'll be trimming out my armhole as well and then there you have it and this is what we have for the front pattern now if you watched the picture very well you could see that it has yoke so i'll be showing you how to do this but first of all i noticed that the shoulder was a bit too pointy and i cut it off like so so that i can avoid keeping at this point and this is what i have so far I'll show you the next step to take so that you can get this right. So 
So for the front pattern to get the yoke, you place your you um, fold your front um, pattern into two, and then you determine where you want the yoke to be. So for the shoulder, I divided my shoulder into two. I'm sorry, my camera cut this off. I didn't realize this until later. So um, the length of the yoke, I decided to go with eight and a half inches. Um, this is not a standard. If you want to go lower, you can do this. So this is my eight and a half inch point and I used a ruler to um, get this done. So um, for me to get that shape there, um, I tried to use my curve, but it was giving me a funny shape. So I decided to go with my free hand. Um, I didn't like the shape it was giving me at all. But if you have a better curve than I do, you can go ahead and use your curve for this. So I used my free hand and I got the shape out. So if you still want to change the shape of this, you're also free to do this. Make it a V, uh, you make it probably like petals, however you want to do this, it's totally up to you. So um, having sorted this out, I'm, I'm going to go in with my scissors um, and I'm going to be leaving half inch at this point so that I'll be able to join the yoke back perfectly. So this was how I got my yoke sorted. So I decided to use a contrasting um, fabric for this and I went for a net. So um, I placed my net on fold and that piece that I cut off, I made sure the folded part was on the folded part of the net. And then I added one inch to the entire side of this net so that I would use the half inch <coughs> to join it and then half inch that I cut off initially. So. If you do less than one inch, you're going to have a problem. So make sure at the end of the day, you add one inch to this. So a quick one just to show you um, that it's also important to know where your fabric stretches. So this net, um, I, do, I wanted the stretchy part to be um, the width and not the length so that it doesn't grow down. So. Um, I, I decided to check it and show you that I already did this off camera. So if you have a stretchy material, you would want to place this as your width and not your length. So for the neckline, I felt it was too deep. Um, so I decided to change it to three and a half inches. So I marked three and a half inches and I reshaped the neck of this gown. So um, this is not a standard, it just works for you. So remember I said to add one inch to this part. So you'll be cutting one inch all the way to the upper part of this. So um, we're done with the front pattern, so by the time we attach this to it, um, it's going to lay flat like so. And we're going to do this using our half inch sewing allowance. We're going to be putting right side to right side, right side to right side, and then we'll be sewing it down. So this is how we're going to be sewing it, place it like so, and then we're going to sew it all the way to attach it properly. So for the lower part of this, um, you're going to be cutting the needed length and for the width, you're going to be using three times the circumference of the gown. So when you get the gown, you measure it and you remember to add one inch allowance to it, um, half inch for joining it up and the other to finish up the hem. So I decided to finish it up like so. I gathered the little bit I had and I encased it 
inside and for the lower part i did um in, i did interlocking for the mouth and i placed it on top and i did it like caribbean so um, i'm going to give you a closer look so this is what i did i gathered it and i i pleated it rather and i encased it into it and i used bias tape to finish up the neckline and this is how the caribbean looks i just gathered and placed it on top and i sewed it on top so if you've watched this far kindly subscribe like and share my video i can't wait to see you in my next one love you bye